85 millimeter is the king of portrait photography and video b-roll and if you own an 85 millimeter prime lens it's a bokeh beast and that's what we're talking about today the sigma 56 millimeter f 1.4 that's actually a full frame equivalent of 85 millimeter after the aps-c crop factor of 1.5 the 56 millimeter being a telephoto lens now that means it will compress the image in a very flattering and pleasing way especially for people and car photography for example and with that compression you get an amazing amount of bokeh especially wide open at 1.4 so i jumped on instagram organized a tfp shoot with a model in my area to test out this lens and this is what we got The Sigma APS-C range is renowned for very fast autofocus but very very sharp images. This is especially true with the Sigma 56mm f1.4. Cropping into 300% you can see the autofocus has hit the mark on the eye as well as the eye is tack sharp. Autofocus is just as good for video with the A6600 having eye and face tracking. I really love the depth, compression and the bokeh this lens produces. It really makes the subject pop against the background. The other APS-C lens that I love from Sigma is the 16mm f1.4. This lens also has great autofocus and is just as sharp but this lens is much wider and doesn't have as much bokeh. To show you the difference between the two, this is the 16mm while this is the 56mm, notice the depth and bokeh change. Now I love this combo when using them together, you can really get a wide establishing shot and tight detail shots. That's the fundamentals of telling a story with photography and video. Having a fast autofocus lens is one thing, but you really need a good camera with good autofocus for the best results. That's why I love the Sony A6600. It's small, compact, relatively cheap, but for photos and videos, it nails the autofocus on the eye every time. When cropping in, that's when you only really appreciate the results of having a lens that's sharp and good autofocus. If you like the way I edited these photos, I do sell presets linked below. They're designed for portraits, but they really work well for landscapes, travel and also drone photos. To really show you how sharp a lens is, I like to do a sharpness test at different aperture ranges. So at 1.4 in the center, it's perfect. Slightly sharper at f2.8, not much difference at 5.6, f11 starts to soften due to diffraction. Back at f1.4 for corner sharpness, and it's slightly soft and reduced contrast, but good at f2.8. Again, 5.6, not much difference, f11 starts to soften due to diffraction. But to get sharp images, you need a lens and camera to have fast and accurate autofocus. You also need the exposure with a fast shutter speed. For portraits my shutter speed doesn't go below 1 over 250. Another rule is to double your focal length so 85 millimeter times 2 would be 170 so shutter speed no slower than 1 over 60 would be the absolute minimum. The build of this lens is mainly plastic and glass, but I just love the size and weight of this lens. It does have a weather or dust gasket at the back, and it is an APS-C lens, but you can also use this on full frame cameras. At about 350 USD on Amazon, it's a steal for the quality. There is an Amazon link in the description below. To be completely honest with you guys, my main photography is weddings and I mainly shoot on the Sony a7 IV. But my second camera is actually this Sony a6600 and the 56mm is basically 
glued to my camera all day. And that's not just because I like the weight and size of this camera and this setup, it's because I really love the images that this little beast of a lens can produce. Now, the 56 millimeter is one of three prime lenses that Sigma produced, that being the 16, the 30, and of course, the 56 millimeter. I actually used to own the 30 millimeter and I really liked that lens, but I ended up selling it for the Samyang 35 millimeter F1.8. Now that lens is not only a full frame lens, but it gives you the APS-C full frame equivalent of the very popular 50 millimeter, while the 30 millimeter only gives you 45 millimeter. And to be honest, I just like the Samyang version better. But the Sigma Trio is renowned to be extremely sharp, very, very fast autofocused. They're very well built and very small and compact. But most importantly for us APS-C users, they're really cheap but they don't skip on quality. I've actually done a full review on the Sigma Trio. You guys can watch that video here, or if you're really interested in the 16 millimeter, which I really love for photo and video, you guys can watch that video right here. Or if you just don't have time, maybe subscribe and hopefully see you next time.